Well, good morning, everyone. This is Dan O'Sullivan with your Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, April the 22nd. We're joined by Josh, Lee, Tom, and Gentry. Going to talk fishing all over Alabama. We'll be right back with what the guys have to say. And don't forget, we got a special event May 6th at Bucks Island. It's Fish Fest time at Bucks Island. Join us May 6th for our fifth annual Fish Fest. Bass boat demos on May 5th from 2 to 6.30 on Neely Henry. We'll have vendor booths, free raffle, free lunch, tackle discounts in the loft, and Q&A panels with top pros like... Me, Matt Heron. Me, Scott Canterbury. Me, Wes Logan. Me, Lee Pitts. And me, John Crew. And more! Come to Fish Fest at Bucks Island, your boating and fishing headquarters, 4500 Highway 77 and Southside. Or call 1-800-I'M-READY. Good morning, everyone. This is Dan O'Sullivan with your Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, April the 22nd. We are joined by our good friend Tom Mott, the Gunnersville King Smasher Man. What have you and St. Jennifer been doing up there these days, Tom? Well, I, I tell you, you know, Dan, we're still running around trying to uh, find those big elusive bites. Uh, you know, uh, I said last week uh, <laughs> those fish were, you know, any of those little small, shallow, hard spots, you know, there'd be tons of fish in them and uh went fish to tournament saturday and then uh they weren't there <laughs> i don't know uh the, i think the water was the bottom was a little turbid and it just it really just changed the bite quite a bit you know we had to do some adjustments on the run and, but we started finding some fish in that intermediate water depth that uh was is really a good sign you know they're starting to at least for me trying to get in those places that you like in that six to eight foot of water you know around those grass lines again uh but there's a lot of guard you know fry garters and things like that up shallow you still catch a lot of good fish up there but I'm telling you, I've just really struggled with a solid pattern that the weather wouldn't screw up. And, th and that seems to be what, you know, really happened. But, you know, we were able to pull out a, a, a 39th place, which wasn't that great. But after, you know, making some uh, some huge adjustments in our game plan, you know, I, I felt pretty good about it. But it, it was one of those uh, woe is me kind of days at the, at the boat ramp, if you will. A lot of fish were caught, a lot of that 15 to 17 pound range right where we fell, you know, and then there were a few big bags you know there was a 27 a couple of 23 so the fish are definitely there uh i think that sight fishing bites about to, to end and uh you know it's gonna get we're gonna start seeing some normalization in the fishing world over there I, i'm looking forward to anyway well sometimes just being able to scrape a, a good limit after you struggle in the morning that's a success that's almost a win in yourself no matter where you finish i know uh all right let's talk about crappie real quick in the last 40 seconds what's going on on the crappie bite well i tell you you can still catch some crappie around those causeways but look out into that 15 to 20 foot of water that's where your big schools are uh I had a friend out yesterday, found a couple of huge schools of crappie just hanging in that sand, right in that 20 foot water, right on a break in a hard spot. So uh, that's where they're going to be found. Uh, I know he brought in some nice ones. So they're out there, guys. Are you having to go to minnows yet or can you catch them on a jig? You know, we've still been fishing with jigs. Uh, I'm not a big live bait guy, but, um, you know, a jig is a little bit easier to get them down there, you know, get it down there. And once you get that school fired up, I mean, it's just you know the whole bottom comes to life so uh you know i think the yeah. the minnow would probably be the more consistent bite but uh you know some jigs and maybe a pink or blue seem to be really uh bringing the fish in right now anyway well tom as always brother we appreciate it go find a big one or two and we'll talk to you again next week well guys we'll be we'll be right back after it tight lines y'all be safe out there good morning everyone this is dan o'sullivan with your bucks island area fishing report for saturday april the 22nd we're joined by the king of Weiss Lake, that crappie guy up there, Lee Pitts, who's going to talk about Neely Henry and Weiss Lakes. Let's start at Neely Henry. It's after the Alabama Bass Trail, big bag one, good weights all the way through. You had a pretty good showing, though I know you probably felt like you could have done better. What's happening at Neely Henry right now? Neely Henry is just, the last four weeks, Neely Henry is shining. You know, the, the bass are biting. You can catch them. I, I know a lot of the guys in the ABT, they went out, you know, out wide and, and fished for them a little deeper. Caught some spots and caught largemouth that were already backed out. A lot of guys fish shallow. So you can kind of do a little bit of everything at Neely. Um, you know, the, the largemouth are getting up there. The, the grass is starting to kind of come along a little bit. You can get some in the thicker patches. Spinnerbait bite, jig bite, uh, throwing some kind of creature bait. And even my buzz bait, I had several fish Saturday morning roll all over a buzz bait. I just, I couldn't stick them. You know, they just didn't want it. But uh, you can do about what you want to to catch fish at Neely right now. Um, and, and Neely is really, I mean, my goodness, eight something pounder. Wow. I mean, it's just, it's really showing out right now. 
Um, and it's not just one or two guys catching fish. Everybody's catching fish. So Neely Henry is the place to be right now for bass fishing. Sure seems like it. I've heard buzz baits, spinner baits, frogs, even a little flipping going on. All right, let's talk Weiss. I know the crappie bite's been still going up there. Maybe not be as good as it was a few days ago, but it's still going. It's going. You know, it's got hot on us now. It's uh, yesterday. We had we had a pretty good day. Caught some caught some good fish, and once again. Uh, staying in that six, eight foot of water, I caught some fish that were skinny as rails, you know, and, and already spawned out. And then I had some too, some white crappie that's coming up that still got eggs in them. So, you, you know, we still got another wave, hopefully that we can continue and prolong this crappie season, but, uh, it's, it's getting a little tough. You know, the white bass, we're catching some of that trolling. Um, it's something that my clients can have a good time. You know, they can get out and get bit. It's not one of those everybody's got straw hats on and just melting out there so uh it, it's, yeah. it's still good we're still catching some fish here i graphed this morning i'm out i kind of i kind of changed gears a little bit i got my new wrap for my boat you know from uh johnny edwards down there in fort Payne, and i just had to get it out on the water and look watch it glisten a little bit so <laughs> i had to get that thing out and uh, i graphed some crappie in 14 15 foot of water and, and looked like some pretty good schools of fish so hopefully we got another wave coming in uh no more about it next week lee as always brother we appreciate it and we will talk to you again next week all right i'm fixing to fire it up and let the let the air flow for a little bit well good morning everyone this is dan o'sullivan with your bucks island area fishing report for saturday april the 22nd we're joined by gentry gordy right now who's going to talk a little bit of lake Martin and a little bit of Jordan Lake. Hey, let's start at Jordan Lake. Gentry, what's happening over there? Um, hey, Dano. Uh, Jordan's doing. Jordan's pretty good. It's um, it's still it's still getting there, you know, with some cooler nights. Um, but I have noticed. Caught. I kind of touch on what Lee said. You know, the buzz bait bite, the spinner bait bite, but also they're they're getting up around that grass. I've noticed uh, a swim jig starting to get leaned on a little bit. Um, that's always fun, especially every now and then you'll find a spotted bass that's laying up around that grass. And the, the swim jig I'm throwing up there is actually a half ounce. It's a little bit bigger, so I'll let it fall instead of just, you know, burning it across the top of that dead grass. Um, you know, just more or less hopping it through it, but that bite's starting to pick up. Oh, that swim jig in the grass is always a ton of fun. Um, what else is going on on the lake? Are you having to, can you catch them on a shaky head or any of that kind of stuff yet? Or are they still kind of up? No, I mean, no, they're there. Um, you know, especially your spotted bass, um, they're on the river, they're, they're on your points. Uh, you know, and even look around the sea walls up there, you know, them spotted bass will get up there in bed as well, you know, with them large mouth. Um, but yeah, your shaky heads, your, your smaller football jigs, all that's still getting bit for your spots, but it's hard for me to go up there and not throw a swim jig. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. All right. Let's talk Lake Martin. No, that's a little bit of a different fishery. What's going on there? Yeah, Martin's still stingy. It's um the water's dirty. You know, I just I just don't think them fish are used to it being that stained that long with the rain we've had. The buzz bait bite up there, your top water bite, your popper, your you know, your big walking baits long, but the water's still cool. Um but you know, it's just blowdowns, they're getting I've even taken a swim jig up there and throw it around some blowdowns, even the back of some of those pockets and gotten bit, but they're just, the quality's not there. I don't know where they're at, but, but, you know, number wise, you can get bit up there just doing about anything. Um, but you know, I've been staying around mid lake, that area. Well, Gentry as always, man, we appreciate it and, uh, get out there and catch a few and we'll talk to you again next week, brother. We'll try. Thanks, guys. Well, good morning, everyone. This is Dan O'Sullivan with your Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, April the 22nd. We're joined by Josh Heron. We're going to talk a little Logan Martin and Lay Lake. Josh, what's happening down there on that end of the Coosa River? Man, it seems like uh, every lake's in its own little world right now. Neely's firing on all cylinders. <laughs> Logan's, uh, Logan's kind of seems like they've come and gone and petering out a little bit and, uh, lay is still lay so uh man it just uh it really depends on the day right now it, it seems like they they each have their days of glory um logan's been fishing a little tougher for me right now but you can get a lot more bites on logan than you can on lay um it seems like those most of the spots have done their deal and are on their way out um and man i'm not real sure when the largemouth ever showed up 
What about, we, we talked about maybe a collision of all the different spawns going on. Have you seen any of that stuff to start to develop yet? Or the shad spawn there? Are you seeing the bluegill starting to move up yet? Yeah, I've already seen the shad spawn. Bluegill are getting there. And uh, like I said, it's, uh, and with this new moon, we, we've definitely got another wave of bass coming. So uh, it, it's kind of weird the past yeah. couple of years on lay have all kind of been the same. We've had these major uh, shad spawns, but man, you just, you don't catch very many bass out of them like you used to. Um, I'm not real sure why, right? but it seems like we have, we have really big shad spawns, but we don't have a lot of bass in them. I noticed that last year on Logan during one of our Coosa River team trail tournaments, I was in the middle of a big giant shad spawn by one of those seawalls and I couldn't get a fish to move on it. I understand what you're saying. All right, Josh, man, we see the bass bite going on a little bit. We talked about that. What's going on in the crappie bite? Uh, it, it seems like there's still a ton of crappie guys out. Um, I think a lot of the crappie are, have spawned out already. They, they seem to do their deal a little early this year. And uh, it seems like we've got some bass running behind and everything else running ahead of schedule. <laughs> are they out there deep or are they still kind of around, maybe around the docks? Where, where are they fishing? Now, most of them are still out kind of in front of the docks. So it seems like these fish that are postponed kind of, they stage out on brush in that six to eight foot range before they head out for the summer. Gotcha. Well, Josh, as always, man, we appreciate everything and we'll talk to you again next week, brother. See you, man. It's Fish Fest time at Bucks Island. Join us May 6th for our fifth annual Fish Fest. Bass boat demos on May 5th from 2 to 6.30 on Neely Henry. We'll have vendor booths, free raffle, free lunch, tackle discounts in the loft, and Q&A panels with top pros like... Me, Matt Heron. Me, Scott Canterbury. Me, Wes Logan. Me, Lee Pitts. And me, John Cruz. And more! Come to Fish Fest at Bucks Island, your boating and fishing headquarters, 4500 Highway 77 and Southside. Or call 1-800-I'M-READY. Well, that'll do it for our Bucks Island Area Fishing Report for Saturday, April 22nd. Thanks to all of you for everything that you do all the time to be a part of the Bucks Island family. You are the most important part of us. We are here to serve you, whether it's parts, tackle, service, or you're looking for that new boat, we're here to help. Thanks for being the best part of Bucks Island again, and we look forward to seeing you next week.